I'm Robert Scoble, and this will be a different kind of uh, conversation, but it's one that the tech companies around the world will find interesting. Um, you know, if you look at Flipboard or Gowalla or even Apple, they separate themselves from the crowd by using design as a key attribute that uh, we all feel and see, but we don't really understand very well. So today we're going to have a conversation with one of the best designers in the world. So who are you? Okay. I'm uh, Stanley Hainsworth and I'm uh, owner of uh, Tether. And it's a design studio, gallery, retail space in Seattle. But tell me a little bit about your past because uh, you've done some remarkable things and all sorts of different Okay, things. well I, I've, I've been very lucky. I've, I've worked uh, for 20 years. I, was, uh, I, I had the opportunity to work at Nike, Lego, and Starbucks. And I started at Nike and, and I was there for 12 years and I did everything from uh, uh, hang tags to annual reports to Nike towns to the Olympics. So, uh, as you know, Nike spends a lot of time and money on their branding, who they are, um, what they look like, and so it was an incredible experience for me. And then I had the opportunity to go to Lego as their global creative director in Denmark, and uh, there I was able to work on everything from designing the new Lego stores that are in malls and high streets to uh, the, the parks, the Lego parks, to um, Lego was just getting into uh, gaming, so the, the Star Wars games and things that have come out since, and TV shows that they did, and comics and everything. So it was a great experience. And then, and then I uh, took a position as um, a VP of Design at, at Starbucks uh, here in Seattle. So that's how I ended up in Seattle, and I was there for four years. Had an uh, incredible experience. Had a great team there, and we did. Uh, we did everything that you see that came from the brand. Um, uh, uh, packaging, what you see in stores, uh, branding, uh, new product launches, uh, website, all those things. And, um, and then a couple years ago I decided after 20 years I, I knew how to do it and I'd like to go and try it on my own. And so, so I, I started Tether and, I, and I've, I've always been uh, interested in um, how can you create a brand of your own while doing branding work or doing design work for other people. Yeah. And so, you know, some great companies out there like IDEO, you know, they're well known for their design work, um, but, you know, they don't create products of their own. So I thought, well, could you do kind of an IDEO, but you could also start creating some of your own product? Yeah. And part of that, some of that was me, just my insecurity. I don't want to be 100% dependent on others for income. Like, give me work so I can earn money. It's like I can create um, some work of my own by creating some of our own products and selling those yep. and it's another way to generate income. Yeah. I think a lot of that came from me working as an actor for years before I got into the design world and being in the same sort of situation and I used to create my own work in yeah. the same way. How, how do you approach a, let's say a tech company comes to you and says we want to build an iPhone app that does blah, you know. Yeah lets you run or you know or lets you buy music or something like that yeah. what, what do you do with them what, what's that first couple meetings like well first of all like uh, a lot of these uh, smaller tech companies come to us and and they want help in in figuring out they, they have a great idea it's like how do we put some color around it how do we create a story around who we are they, they see like the companies that you mentioned Apple and uh, others that you know they they have a persona so for me I always equate uh, brands as people so you could describe what Apple is as a person because of the personality that they've created so with these companies the uh, first thing I do is like let's figure out what your story is what sets you apart in the marketplace from anyone else so yeah you have a product or a service but you know what colors that what are you what are you like as a person because everyone that you meet, you know, when you first see me, you know, you have a certain opinion because of the way I dress or the way I talk or my hair, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> and, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I'm thinking of doing that myself. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the same way with a with a brand. Um, you know, a product a product 
needs to have a brand associated with it. You know, when people say there's a new buzz about you know a new app that comes out, it's like, well, who made that? Okay, now, okay, well, who you know that that name of that company? What does that stand for now? Yeah. So if that if that company wants to create other products, they need to start developing their story, and then everything that they do will link back to that story of theirs. Yeah. One one thing I you know I grew up right near Apple Computer, and I've always watched uh, Steve Jobs, and he always did uh, design where you wouldn't look for design, right? Mm -hmm. I, I remember he showed me the iMac uh, when, he, when he brought out the recent iMacs, and he, he showed me the back of the iMac. You know, it, it wouldn't be, uh, most people don't care about the design yeah. of the back of a computer, they care about the yeah. front, right? where they're gonna yeah. look all day long. But he really cares about the back, or uh, when he built the Apple II factory, they painted the floor yellow. Mm. Nobody would ever care that yeah. the factory had a floor that was painted yeah. yellow, but it, to him it was important. It, is that how you build a really strong design to start where people don't look? Well, it's, it's all part of that, that brand personality. You know, what he's doing, he's, he's realized that people have, the, you know, me as a person, I want to associate myself with, with things that complement my story, that help define who I am. So when I buy a, a, you know, a, a computer, you know, I want that thing to be beautiful inside and out, backwards and forwards. So what he's, you know, he realized that early on, that, you know, that a phone or a computer was actually an accessory to you. You know, it's an appendage of you. And our phones and our iPads and our computers have all become our appendages, part of our personality. So his attention to detail and to the beauty of it, you know, really tied into his story and, and his attention to, uh, to the design aesthetics. So I think that's you know, a, a key thing, you know, some people called it snobbery, you know, in, in the beginning, but it's become, you know, very successful. Yeah. 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 You keep using the word story. What, what do you mean by story? Uh, you know, we don't, most people, when they see a Starbucks or a Nike, they don't think of a story. They, yeah. they just think of a cool logo or a, you know, a cool store or something like that. They don't think of story. What, why do you keep thinking well, about that? I, I think it's because successful brands have a story. So whether you think of that um, directly or not, it is in your head. So, you know, Apple has a story, Starbucks has a story, Nike has a story. Um, and if that story is told well and fully, then the, the brands are able to um, weather lots of storms that they be, because you become a brand fan, you know, of that personality or of that story. And I will stick with you. You can't, you can't have too many screw ups and I might leave. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll weather some of those storms. So, you know, like, well, like when I left uh, Starbucks, people said, you know, who, who do you want to work? Who, what kind of companies would you like to do work for? And they expected me to say, like, you know, really hip brands, you know, like Diesel or, or Apple or something. And I said, uh, Microsoft and Walmart. And they were like, what? You know, the devils? And uh, <laughs> you know, those are kind of from my cynical design friends uh, saying that. And uh, and I said, well, you know, these are two great, you know, American brands that have never told their story well. They both have incredible stories. I mean, the, the, the startups <laughs> that they were at the time, just unbelievable. You know, yeah. Bill Gates, what he went through and the, his story, it's never been told well. And, and they've never used it, you know, to their advantage. Yeah. They've become a product company with no soul, and they've been struggling with that, you know. It's, it's hard to add that on. We, we just toured Microsoft and I worked there for three years. And you know, they have this uh, Windows Phone 7 coming yeah. out, which if it was me and I was running that team, I would call it X, the portable Xbox because Xbox has a cool yeah. brand that people are uh, aspirational toward. They want that's an right. Xbox. They, we, Windows, uh, that's something yeah. we have to buy or yeah. we have to use because of work or yeah. it's not fun anymore. It's not, yeah. It doesn't have that soul. But they, they're so... Uh, hung up on Windows and the fact that everybody mm -hmm. knows Windows and knows that brand that they're not yeah. willing to trash it and destroy yeah. it. I, and I know that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And we do work for Microsoft. I, I love Microsoft. We do work for the entertainment devices team. We worked on the new uh, Microsoft stores that, that have launched and um, they, they just haven't quite found that right formula yet yeah. you know, to, to, to touch consumers you know, as with, with their story. To create those loyal consumers, because they—it's exactly like you said—it's more they use it because they have to, because the other 98% of the world uses Windows. Yeah, 
And they talk like that when you meet with them, you know? Yeah. Well, we, we're used by 90%, so yeah. we don't need to be Apple, yeah. you know? <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, but you could have yeah. been 90% and cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why, you know, the whole thing about creating a, a loved brand, a brand that someone loves, that's, that's because they have a story, and then they, the, the product is the, is the proof of that. You know, the product isn't the, the first thing, like Apple, you know, I'm a typical Apple user. Well, I'll walk into the Apple store and I'll look and see what I don't have yet. You know, I don't go in there because there's a you know particular product launch. Because uh, I'll go in there because I love I love the brand, I love the store, I love the way they treat me when I walk in, and um, so I'll buy about anything they put on the shelves. And so that's I become a brand fan, and that's what has happened to Starbucks. You know, there's brand fans, Lego, they've created you know, clubs outside of Lego or Harley Davidson that are, have nothing to do with the brand. The brand doesn't run them or oversee them, but you know, it's a, it's a thriving um, clubs or, or uh, communities that develop around these brands. Like, how do you get to that, yeah. you know, as a brand? I mean, what a dream that is. They're, they're promoting your brand. They're tattooing it on their body. They're wearing their, your t-shirts. They're promoting you. Yep. So, I mean, that's the goal of every brand to, to get to that point. And how do you do that? Well, you have to come up with an authentic story. And you have to be true to that. Once you start getting away from it and start, like a, Nike went through that period and Starbucks went through that period where we're very successful. We could slap a swoosh on anything and sell it. Hey, let's, let's sell uh, lunch boxes or school supplies. And what does that have to do with you know, being an athlete? Yeah. And you know, Starbucks started getting into that too with like, uh, how about movies? We promote those in our stores. Like, that doesn't have anything to do with the coffee house experience. Yeah. Music, yeah. Books, yeah. Coffee, yeah. <laughs> but, mo you know, they tried movies and they go, oh, that doesn't work. So, you know, you're, you know, the consumer will will correct you. Yeah. By, you know, leaving you, they'll we'll go somewhere else. Because it's not that's not who I signed up for. That's not the brand I signed up for. It's, you're someone else now. How how important is technology to your job? Well, that's. Technology now, like when I started in design, we didn't have computers. You know, everything was done. Um, you know, we drew everything, and um, uh, we used a whole different process. But now with computers, that's that is our job. We do everything on our, on our computers. Well, if we do sketches, um, you know, we'll scan them into the computer, and then we'll manipulate them. So um, the the computers can't come up with the ideas for us. The technology can't generate ideas. That and there's there's one thing like I just. Uh, um, finished a book um, about how ideas come to life. It's called Ideology. And I wrote it because I was disturbed by how people were using technology to get ideas. Yeah. It seemed like you don't have to come up with original ideas anymore. Like I would observe people, you know, if they're given a challenge, first thing they do is start, you know, they go on um, a, a web browser and they start searching for inspiration. So what they're doing is they're kind of feeding off other people. Or they start, you know, flipping through stuff that other people have done on the web. So we're kind of like, it's, it, it felt kind of uh, like we're feeding off each other, kind of cannibalistic. You know, I'm just taking a little piece of you, a little piece of you. So in one way, it's cool. It's kind of mashing up a bunch of ideas. But where's your original idea? Yeah. You know, we're, we're in the old days when you couldn't browse everything and to be inspired by it or borrow from it or however you want to call it. You had to actually go for a run, walk along the beach, go for a hike or meditate in your chair and actually come up with something original. So that's kind of what the book is. How do you come up with an original idea, make it yours, bring your life experiences into it? And I think that's what's great about a lot of startups, a lot of these tech startups. Some of them are influenced by, or you can see they're a spin-off of some other idea, yeah. but there's some that just like, where did that come from? That was like, no one's ever done anything like that before. So that's what's exciting when someone comes up with that and it's like, you know, it, it just kind of blows everybody out of the water. That's, that's, I think that's one thing that successful brands do, or companies like Nike, they gave people what they didn't even know what they needed yet. Yeah. And Starbucks did too. <laughs> you didn't know you needed a cup of coffee that like, cost that much. And, but now it's an essential part of your life. Apple's done the same thing. I didn't know I needed that, but I have to have that now. So I think that's what great companies do. They give you what they, you know, they'll, they'll read your soul and they, they'll give you something that you don't even know what you need. Yeah. What do you wish uh, CEOs or, or people who hire you knew before they came in to see you? Um, I guess the importance of, 
of that story that 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 really you shouldn't Apple a great example you know you shouldn't skimp on the quality that's not where you that's not where you skimp that's not where you cut corners it's it's the quality and even if you save a few pennies here and there um, by you know by shaving some of that quality off um, in the long run it's not going to be enduring for your brand and I think it's you know you should be you know you should have every startup should have their one-year plan but even more important is their five-year plan you know, what what do you, how do you envision yourself five ten years from now what that's the first thing I did when I started tether is I did a, an FAQ with myself what's that I, an FAQ. Oh, uh, I, I, I inter- yeah I interviewed myself and I and I and I shared that with my team here when I started I said this is where I see us in five years because I interviewed myself five years from now and how our company is <laughs> so, so it's been kind of our, our, our business plan, our guiding, our, our soul. Yeah. You, wrote, you wrote about 10 things you've learned along yeah. your path. What, give me a sense of what those 10 things are. Well, uh, a lot of them are, are things like um, how to work with people and um, uh, how, how to inspire uh, people you know, when you're working within a company, whether you own the company or you work within a large corporation. It's really the same kind of principles. It's how to get uh, great work out of people. It's how to work with clients um, or vendors. Um, how to lead them along without dictating to them. But one story is, um, I w- when I was at when I was at Starbucks, we I, I noticed that the the photography was wasn't looking good, yeah. and it was because there was like five clients in the studio with the art director and the photographer, and so you know as as the head of design, I could have gone in and kind of cleansed the temple and set everyone out and, you know, this is our job, we're doing this. But instead, I, I, I got everyone together and I showed beautiful photography. And, I, and it was right before lunch and it was like, you know, dripping things and luscious things. And everyone said, wow, could we do that? And I said, oh, that's a good idea. Well, let me try it. And so went out and did a little test shoot and shot some stuff. And, and, and I said, they said, that is so beautiful. And, and they said, I said, you know how, how we get this? It's like, it's like an artist. A photographer is like an artist or like a, a film director. And they go, oh, yeah, like no one on the set? I go, yeah, yeah. You know, we interpret. It's not a strict, it's not a strict uh, you know, facsimile of your product. It's an emotional interpretation of it. And, and so they said, oh, okay, cool. And so... From then on, they never came, and I never had to tell them not to come. I just, I just did it, you know, using that, uh, using that method, and I, I found that very successful in a collaborative environment. Like whether it's a company that you own with ten people, or it's Starbucks with you know thousands of people, that you know there's there's ways to treat people and respect who they are and what their opinions are, um, but still kind of get your uh, get your point across. That's really brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so hard to do because yeah. when you when you know the right way to do something, it's really hard to hold yourself back yeah. and l- help people realize it themselves. Yeah. I mean, it's faster just to do it yourself. Say, no, nope, we're going to change this. But if you're trying to build a culture and a story and a, and a brand, then you, you need to bring them along too. Because, yeah. you know, your goal should be eventually, whether your, your goal is to sell it in five years or whatever, is kind of phase yourself out of it. Yeah. You know, I start. I started Tether. My name started Tether, but I want it to be about Tether, not about me. So I'm trying to get everyone else, you know, to to be, um, you know, to step up and to understand the way that I feel and think, because that's kind of the way Tether is. And then Tether will become everyone and not just me. And then I, if I fade away, great, Tether will still be strong, Very cool. or whatever your company is. Where do I find you on the web? Uh, it's uh, TetherInc.com. TetherINC.com. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much All for right, a yeah. few minutes. Yeah, pleasure. All right, thank you.